So what if you have a service that you'd like to self-host, but you're stuck behind something like CGNAT? How would you get around it? Well, there's a few different tools such as Cloudflare Tunnels, Tailscale, NetBird, and I've got videos on all of those linked down below. But what about for those of you that would like to spin up your own VPS server, load WireGuard on there and forward any of the ports you want over to your PFSense that's behind a CGNAT setup. Or maybe you just don't want to expose your public IP address. It'll work that way too, where we take your PFSense, even if it has a public IP, connect it to this VPS server that you can get from somewhere like Linode for $5 a month, and then forward all that traffic over to a system that is either the PFSense itself or something behind it for self-hosting. That's what we're going to cover today in this video, how to set that up. And it's relatively easy. I have an entire tutorial linked down below where I wrote this up as well. We'll be using that right up kind of as I walk through the video and referencing it. You'll find those and all those other videos I mentioned linked down below. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance our operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Let's go over the layout for this setup. I have a Debian server with a public IP. It's just a clean install of Debian 12. I happen to be running it in Linode. Linode is not a sponsor of this. It will work in Linode or any other virtual hosting platform you want, or really anywhere you have a system that's running Debian with a public IP. You can use this for other distros, but I choose Debian and you'll just have to modify the commands if you have a different distro that is your preference. The WAN IP address of this Debian server is 172.234.22.78. We have a tunnel address that we're going to assign to it of 1069.69.2 slash 24. The WireGuard tunnel itself is 1069.69.0 slash 24. No, you don't have to make the entire tunnel slash 24. Someone will probably point that out. For simplicity, that's how I'm setting it up. Our WireGuard tunnel on the other side is 1069691 slash 24, and it is running PFSense. The PFSense IP address is 1069643, and it is behind CGNAT. For those you're not familiar, that means you don't have a public accessible IP address, which is probably what brought you to this video. Now, this server right here running at 192.168.234.13, the goal is to forward traffic that comes in on this public IP address over to this server. And that's what this setup will do. It'll build the tunnel and then we were going to have a set of rules and we're going to do testing with net data because it's simple and I have it running and I actually have it running in Docker on this outside the scope of this, but I wanted to show it doesn't really matter what's running on this particular server. It can do the port forwarding and then you can use this to build on how you want to forward your ports or if you want to forward it to any other type of service that's sitting behind a CG NAT system because we're going to forward any ports we choose over this tunnel to this particular server here. Now, this is the write-up in my forums that you'll find linked down below where you can copy and paste if you want to follow along in the video while I'm setting up the Debian server. There's a lot of commands, so I wanted to make them easy for you to simply copy and paste. And of course, when you get to the settings for configuring the interface, that's a lot of detail that you really have to get right in order to make this work. Something else I want to note, under the private key. In here, it just says private key, but when I'm on the Debian server, I will be showing my private key and public IP addresses, but don't worry, that'll all be changed by the time this video is published, so it's not really an information leak or a security risk. Now, there's a lot in the IP tables settings, so I added this explanation of WireGuard IP table rules and what each of those does with a breakdown for those of you who want to read a little bit further and understand exactly how each of those work. I also have a small summary here of just where the flow of data is, very similar to the graphic I had at the earlier slides. 
Something else I want to note is if you want WireGuard to run as a service, you can do system control enable WG quick at WG zero because simply bringing up the tunnel and bringing down the tunnel is fine until that system reboots. Once that system reboots, the tunnel won't be up unless you set it up as a system. And it's as simple as copying and pasting this in. And then you would use the system control start or system control stop and be able to start and stop WireGuard. The first step is logging into our Debian server that has this public IP address of 172.234.22.178 and we are logging in as root so I don't need to type sudo a bunch of times. Next step is going to be editing the syscontrol.com file and we want to make sure that net IPv4 IP forward equals 1. By default this is commented out like this on a new install. Just remove it so it's not commented out anymore and then save this file. You can run syscontrol-p to activate the changes. Now we want to apt install IP tables in the WireGuard tools, and they're both the newest version already installed. Now let's go to the WireGuard directory, and this is the command we would run to generate new keys. I'm not going to run it again because I already have keys generated, but in the end it will look like this. We have the private key, and we have the public key. And the public key is the one that's going to go on our PF sent server. So you can simply copy and save that to some notepad file. We're going to use that later. And we'll need the private key to start building our wg0.conf file. Now let's edit our wg0.config file. We have our interface. We have the private key in here. We have 1069691 slash 24 because that's the address range. We have the listen port 51820. These are all the settings you can copy and paste directly in from my forum post. The post up settings are what brings in all the IP table settings. Post down means when this WireGuard tunnel shuts down, also clear and delete all those IP table settings. And then the peer has the public key from our PF sense and the allowed IP from our PF sense, which is 1069.69.2 slash 32. It's slash 24 up here because we're establishing the full size of the tunnel, but down here it's only slash 32 because we just want this one IP from this particular PF sense and this public key. Now you get this public key when you're setting up the new tunnel inside of PF sense and you have the copy option here and you can see that this is the same key that we're just copying and pasting into that server. There's no need to specify what IP address PFSense is coming from because the PFSense is going to be reaching out to this server. Let's bring our WireGuard tunnel up. You can see it added all the IP table settings here. If there was any errors, it would let us know. Then we can do a WG show and we can see it's already established a connection. I have blurred out the lab IP address right here, but this would be the IP address if you're behind CGNAT that your ISP is providing. Now I'm doing this with PFSense 2411, but it will work with CE just the same. And if you look at the WAN IP over here, it is 169.69.43. That is not a public IP address. So we're going to go to VPN, then WireGuard. And I already have a tunnel established, but I'll walk you through the process of creating a new one. Let's we'll call this one test for an example. You can ignore the listen port because this system doesn't have a public IP, so the listen port is not relevant. We click generate to generate a new set of keys, and we're going to head and save that tunnel. Now you can apply the changes here and we have this second tunnel and the next step is actually adding an interface to this tunnel. So if you edit the tunnel again, you can see it brings you to the interface assignments. You can also simply go to interface and assignments here and you would assign this tunnel by clicking add, clicking the name of the interface, enable it, giving it a name, putting in static IPv4, putting in 1420 for the MTU and MSS, giving it the IP address of 10.69.69.1. Now we've already done that, so let's go over to the other interface where this is set up that I called WG Debian. So if we scroll down, static IPv4, 1420, 1420, 10.69.69.2, and a upstream gateway of 10.69.69.2. Now you can add the gateway here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the routing to do that so we can put some more settings in. And you'll note that this is a slash 24. This setting right here on this interface is the equivalent in our servers 10.69.69.1.24, except for we're 10.69.69.2.24. So having this whole interface set up, then we're going to go over to system and routing, and we'll edit this existing gateway here, or you would have to add a new one if it didn't exist. Make sure it's tied to that interface that we just created. Give it a name, 
the gateway is 1069.69.2 because that's this system. And we're monitoring, we're reaching across to 1069.69.1 and you'd click save. Now, something worth noting when you're in the gateways here, make sure your default IPv4 gateway is not set to automatic. In this case, I want it set to WAN DHCP because that's where I want the traffic to go out. Now let's go back over to our VPN and our WireGuard and take a look at the peer setting. We can see there's one peer attached down here. This peer setting is really important because this is where you specify where the endpoint is. So 172.234.22.78, 51820, which is the public IP address and same listening port of this system. Let me go back down here. We have the public key. Now to get the public key, that's that public key we generated earlier. That's right here. That's that public key we generated earlier. We would copy this key and paste that right here. Then we put the IP address of that Debian server, 1069.691 slash 32 here, and we would save this peer. Because this is already set up, we can click on status and we can see that the tunnel is up and connected and we've sent data across. Now we need to create the firewall rule that allows this to forward. So we're gonna firewall the NAT now I already have a rule created, but I'll show you what happens when you add a new one. By default, it wants to choose WAN. We don't want to choose WireGuard. We want to choose the WG Debian. That will also switch on the destination here. So if we look at the existing rule, we'll go ahead and edit this. WG Debian, IPv4, we want a protocol TCP. It already defaulted to the WG Debian address. We put the port number in that we want to forward and those port numbers also match the port numbers we're doing right here. So we have 10.69.69.2.199. That's our PF Sense IP address. And we're saying route these ports to this system. And from the beginning, this is that system that is behind this PF Sense at 192.168.234.13. And we want to forward it to port 19999 behind this system. Everything else we can leave at default. And I just put a description here as net data from WireGuard interface to home server. Click save and apply. Now, if we go over to our firewall rules and we go under WG Debian, you'll see I have this rule at the top that I added to allow ping. It's not necessary. I just do that so I can ping from the WireGuard server to the PF Sense to verify connectivity. And then you can see I have this rule that was created when we created the NAT rule. This is saying only allow this port to come through that interface. You don't want to put those rules over here. You don't need any rules under WireGuard. You can put them all under this particular interface. Now, if we did everything right, we can go to HTTP colon slash slash 172.234.22.78.19999. Now, by default, NetData does not use a TLS connection. That's why it's HTTP. But if it was a service that uses TLS, you would use HTTPS. Now it does give us a warning because it sees that it's on a public IP address. We're just gonna ignore the warning because this is a demo and I wanted to see it working and it's working fine. Now, if we go over here and we filter through the connections, I wanna point out that you don't see the public IP address that I'm coming from. You instead only get to see the address 1069.69.1 and it's hitting 1069.69.2 and forwarding over to this 192 address. That's one thing about the way this setup works is you're not seeing any of the public IP addresses. They're always gonna come from the 10 dot address because they're being translated. I wanna go back over the Debian server and ping 10.69.69.2, the PF send system. The reason I enable ping is for troubleshooting. If you aren't getting a connection or you're having a trouble trying to establish whether or not this system can talk to the PF sense, that's what this rule will do is allow for ping. But if we disable this rule and apply changes, when we try to ping, we can't ping, it becomes a little bit harder to do any troubleshooting. Now, another use case and problem that this can solve is if you wanna run OpenVPN on your PFSense and you don't have a public IP address, you can use this same process on that Debian 12 server to forward over the UDP ports necessary for OpenVPN. And then inside of PFSense, you would simply bind OpenVPN to the WireGuard interface as opposed to the WAN interface and have the appropriate rules. And I tested this and it does work. Now, I know a lot of people are going, Tom, IPv6 will solve these problems and CGNAT is just a kludge and a, band-aid on it just like NAT is in general but 
ah, I can't solve your IPv6 problems. And I've seen adoption kind of flatten out on IPv6. That's why these types of solutions exist. And that's why this video exists. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this the solution for you? Or do you prefer Tailscale, Netbird, Cloudflare Tunnels, any one of those? Let me know. Also, head over to my forums where you find the write-up on all the tutorial on how to set all those settings up. So you can just copy and paste in there and have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And hit me up on the socials and whatever socials I'll be on, you'll find at lawrencesystems.com. All right, and thanks.